It's been almost 80 years since the U.S. Coast Guard lost communication with Amelia Earhart partway through her flight around the world. What exactly happened on July 2, 1937 isn't known, but now re-examination of previous discoveries near the site of her disappearance are bringing light to this decades-old mystery. Hello, this is Light Matters for November 2016. I'm your host, Justine Murphy. In early July 1937, now legendary aviator Amelia Earhart sent a series of distress signals as she was passing over the middle of the Pacific Ocean. In 1940, the discovery of human remains on Gardner Island offered a flash of hope before being dismissed as unrelated to Earhart. But now, reassessment of those discoveries using advanced imaging technology is bringing scientists closer to solving this intriguing enigma. Stay tuned for more on that later in the show. Also this month, we'll learn how scientists in Scotland are using laser scanning to ensure preservation of the historic Queen Mary turbine steamship, and we'll examine new technology that Purdue University researchers say will aid law enforcement in crime scene forensics. A sneak peek at the December issue of Photonic Spectra is coming up too. The Queen Mary is one of Scotland's most famous turbine steamships. This 83-year-old vessel has been out of official commission since the late 1970s, but has maintained a strong public presence to this day. Restoration efforts are bringing this historically significant Clyde steamship back to its original splendor, and laser scanning technology will make sure it stays that way. A team from the School of Simulation and Visualization, which is part of the Glasgow School of Art in Scotland, has digitally documented the Queen Mary with 3D laser scanning technology. Used to rapidly capture very precise images, this scanning technique involves the controlled steering of laser beams, followed by distance measurement at every pointing direction. The Queen Mary is now dry docked in Greennock, Scotland, allowing the nearby Glasgow team to discharge one million laser beams per second at the ship to create a highly detailed 3D image. They used a Zoller and Froelich laser scanner, which features a maximum data acquisition rate of just over one million pixels per second to capture large amounts of high quality data. Alastair Rawlinson, the head of data acquisition at the art school, told Photonics Media that the technique did not harm the Queen Mary, but instead has provided the most complete and precise images that are millions of times more accurate and detailed than photographs. With laser scanning, the precision of such images can be marked down to the nearest millimeter. The historic ship is now owned by the Friends of TS Queen Mary organization, which is raising money to restore it. The 3D images will be used for comparison to future scans in monitoring rates of decay or damage over time, helping to ensure that restorations are preserved well into the future. Ultimately, the images will be featured as part of an interactive exhibition planned for the ship once it is fully restored. Sophisticated crime scene forensics technologies create mind-blowing television storylines and movie plots. We see it all the time. What we don't always see is highly advanced technologies being applied in real-life crime scene situations. Technologies such as 3D imaging systems are frequently being used in law enforcement investigations, and now a team led by Purdue University is taking it a step further. Purdue's XYZT Laboratory, in conjunction with the U.S. Department of Energy Special Technologies Lab, forensic scientists, and others, have demonstrated that encoding data in LED lighting could soon allow investigators to take more precise, high-resolution 3D images of shoe prints and tire tread marks in snow and soil. This binary defocusing technique is different. Without touching any surface, it is projected onto the snow or soil surface. The light bouncing back to the camera contains the pre-encoded information, helping the system to determine the depth of surface features while using a single imager. Existing 3D imaging systems can be difficult to use, according to the researchers, but this new approach should bring intelligence to the algorithms so that forensic examiners, and even those with little to no technical expertise, need only click a button to capture high-quality images. The team is now also developing a system that could produce immediate images with an extremely high resolution of 600 dpi. This, combined with the new imaging technique, would provide more precise results than are possible with casting. This work could ultimately maximize the value of shoe print and tire tread evidence in a criminal investigation. 
It's been nearly 80 years since the U.S. Coast Guard lost communication with pioneering American aviator Amelia Earhart during her attempted circumnavigation of Earth. Just before her plane essentially disappeared somewhere near Howland Island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, the radio contact was sporadic, with her last transmission citing low fuel and nowhere to land. Search efforts prompted many to believe Earhart crashed into the ocean. But in 1940, there was a glimmer of hope that this was not the case, in the discovery of human skeletal remains, a few puzzling artifacts, and pieces of aircraft metal on Gardner Island, also known as Niku Mororo, about 350 nautical miles from the uninhabited Howland. A British doctor at the time dismissed those discoveries, claiming the bones were inconsistent with the typical females. But now, the International Group for Historic Aircraft Recovery, or TIGER, is breathing new life into this legendary mystery thanks to advanced hyperspectral imaging equipment and techniques. In an interview with Photonics Media, renowned forensic imaging scientist Jeff Glickman said he has been working with TIGER to analyze the original findings using an SOC-710-VP hyperspectral imaging system from Surface Optics in California. Such systems work well in forensic analysis to distinguish and recognize materials and enhance the visibility of faint or obscured features of an object. It is serving as a non-destructive tool for the Tiger team. The bones discovered, which include upper and lower arms, are being compared to photographs and measurements of Earhart's arms. While originally dismissed as belonging to a male, Glickman says the new imaging data cites a likelihood that the bones could, in fact, be hers. He is also now using the hyperspectral imaging system to examine pieces of aluminum and other metal found on Gardner Island in hopes of finding hidden information that could connect them to Earhart's Lockheed Model 10 Electra airplane. The hyperspectral system is also analyzing artifacts such as a small glass cosmetic jar of ointment once used to fade freckles. It is well documented that Earhart had freckles, as well as an aversion to them. Tiger notes that Glickman's recent findings do not necessarily prove that Earhart died a castaway, but the data certainly points in that direction. This holiday season, consumers will be lining up to buy Apple Watches, Samsung smartphones, and high-definition televisions. These are said to be among the most sought-after consumer electronics this year, but they also have another distinction they may soon include OLED displays. OLEDs are prized for their crystal clear visual characteristics and compatibility with flexible and transparent materials. Industry watchers are so enamored with them, many say it's not a matter of if they'll displace conventional LEDs, but rather when. Be sure to read Marie Freebody's OLEDs Step In Where Design Matters in the December issue of Photonic Spectra. As we look beyond the holidays, for many in the industry, the year truly begins with Photonics West in San Francisco. An estimated 1,300 companies are geared up to showcase their latest products and applications. The expo, running from January 31st through February 2nd, gives attendees face-to-face -face access to the world's top suppliers, hiring companies, and business sessions. This year will feature 19 regional clusters and pavilion displays, and an estimated 250 new product launches that range from fiber optic components and optical detectors to IR sources and metrology systems. Don't miss our comprehensive Photonics West preview, also in the December issue of Photonic Spectra. That's it for this month's show. Drop us a line with your feedback and suggestions for things you'd like to see us cover. We'd love to hear from you. Until next time, keep following the photons.